Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies at Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. I don't get it. The Hitman's Bodyguard looks great on paper. An R-rated action buddy comedy like the kind we used to get all the time in the 80s and 90s, starring Deadpool and Nick Fury, no less, as two badasses who hate each other but must work together to survive an army of very bad dudes who are trying to kill them as they erotic through Europe in a race against time. Oh, oh, and there's even a European villain played by Gary Oldman. Damn it, man, it's just like old times. Let's do this. I mean, come on, doesn't that just sound great? Like the perfect kind of popcorn flick to close out the summer movie season? Even the movie's ad campaign seemed cheeky and self-aware, playing up the irony of having the world's most deadly assassin, played by Samuel L. Jackson, needing the assistance and protection of Ryan Reynolds' professional bodyguard. I was all set for a good time when I sat down to this one. And then, and then, the movie started. It had kind of a humorous opening scene in which Ryan Reynolds' character loses everything he's built in a single deadly moment. But I remember thinking, what? The music is awfully loud, don't you think? This banging rock and roll music? But, but it's fine, it's fine. Th then we get to the next scene, and it has some quick, quippy, rat -tat dialogue that now can't be heard over that soundtrack. It's bizarre. I saw this movie in Dolby Atmos, too, and for the first few scenes, and in occasional scenes throughout the film, I just could not make out what characters were saying but for the blaring music. And this is emblematic of the problems that this movie has. Everything it throws at you is the sort of thing it's supposed to throw at you, but it's just a little off, you know? Just a little, a little too much here, a little too little there. It's, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't gel. None of it works. The chemistry and the relationship between the hitman and the bodyguard, who of course have a history when the movie starts, the relationships with the respective women in their lives, and don't, don't get me started on Selma Hayek's character. Oh, God. The twists and the turns of the plot don't really add anything, nor does the male bonding, nor the jokes. The jokes! And here is where, in a movie with these two leads, you really have a problem if the jokes themselves aren't funny. So the fault has to be with director Patrick Hughes, who can't seem, try as he might, to generate an actual moment in this movie. Not a cool, holy crap action moment, not a touching moment, not a suspenseful moment, and not a really solid comedy bit. And he tries all of these things multiple times. The story just keeps trying things, inserting random flashbacks, setups and payoffs that occur at really weird times, and outlandish story beats that simply make no sense, and cranking up the music every five minutes or so to increasingly irritating effect. This whole thing's a mess, and none of it works. Well, with one exception, there are a couple of really solid action sequences here that manage to generate some excitement. One, a chase through The Hague in the Netherlands, and the other, a chase through Amsterdam, which combines gunfire, narrow avenues, a high-speed boat on the canal, a motorcycle, a grenade launcher, and lots of vehicular mayhem. These two sequences almost kind of redeemed the movie for me, but every other moment of the film was either ridiculous, painfully unfunny, or just kind of limp. So those cool action moments may have moved the needle, but in the end, I've got to give the hitman's bodyguard an empty bag of popcorn. This thing just apes so many better movies of this genre. I mean, at one point I could swear they swiped the score from Midnight Run and another set in the bloody aftermath. I heard a very, very lethal weapony saxophone solo drifting out of the speakers. And it just can't get any of those spinning gears to catch and make the movie interesting. As a result, I forgot almost everything good about the hitman's bodyguard on the walk to the car and resolve to go home and watch one of those classic buddy movies instead. Well, that does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop, and click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more, and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the Hitman's Bodyguard in the comments as well. Let's hear it. I can tell you I'm sort of inspired now, so stay tuned to this channel for my top ten buddy cop, uh, you know what, uh, let's make it top ten bromance movies. I think I can have some fun with that, and I can assure you that the Hitman's Bodyguard will be nowhere to be found on that list. In the meantime, thanks for watching, I'm the Colonel, and whatever happened to the seatbelt rule?